Hello there everyone. So today's video is going to be a little bit different because I recently went to a bead show and I thought instead of just showing you the things that I got in a haul, why not bring you along with me? So that's what we're going to be going now. Now the show itself is called Rock Gem and Bead Show and it's held in Harrogate. It's on twice a year and I went last time and I really enjoyed it. So I was very much looking forward to this time around and I definitely knew I was going to be coming back. So at the end of the video there's going to be a bit of a haul so stay tuned for that. Just with a few things that I got there. And just to mention, I'm doing a voiceover just because I wasn't too sure how the noise would be with a lot of people being there. But then as you can see, there's a lot of different tables with many different kinds of things. And you can pretty much get whatever you like here. So anything you're looking for, you can probably find it in a place like this. So for instance, there's loads of these kind of more natural stones within different gemstone types where they're shaped and polished but they're not necessarily capuchins or beads so you can find loads of different kinds of them obviously they also have some meaning to some people so that's really nice because I do like that kind of thing myself also the more raw gemstones I tend to collect that when I can and I do tend to be attracted to certain gemstones over others but obviously that's completely personal but then you can see here, just looking on this one table, there's so much variety just within the table alone. And this was just the very first table that we were looking at. So you had gemstones in pretty much every colour of the rainbow, just in this table alone, but obviously there's loads more as we're going to be walking around. I also really like stones like these here, where they're basically more or less clear stones, but then they have this beautiful AB or rainbow coating. I'm really attracted to those things as well. Because in a way they're neutral, but at the same time they're just so unique and elegant, but they also pretty much go with everything. And there was also quite a lot of these selenite sculptures, so whether they're larger sculptures or more raw, and also there were loads of wands. So I do like selenite, it's really beautiful I think. It has this really lovely sheen to it, so I definitely would want more of that. I do have some hearts actually that I really love, I really like that gemstone. And then, here on the end of the table, I found one of my biggest weaknesses, and that is Druzy. So I have a real weakness for that. I'm kind of like, if you know the film Up, the animated film, that dog that basically goes squirrel and gets distracted, that's what I'm like with Druzy. And really, any kind of Druzy in different colours, it just really catches me and I just can't really help it. It's a big weakness of mine. But then there were also loads of strands with beads, so both non-gemstone strands, but also gemstone ones in obviously different kinds and colours. So this was just one wall of them that, to be honest, you could probably spend a bit of time just going through them alone. So another thing that I saw quite a lot of with these gemstone spheres, so obviously you can get them in lots of different kinds of gemstones and sizes, and they're displayed in these little stands, so they stand out nicely. Now I didn't get any of them, but I do really like the way they look. What I did find later on was something I really wanted to get, but I kind of just chose not to. It's a pure copper ball and you could get it in different sizes. I really like that and I'll probably want to get that in the future but I did kind of hold off for now. So I'll definitely be looking out for that in the future. Now another thing I found really interesting was kind of seeing how the different tables display the different gemstones and pieces they were selling. For instance this one here was the only one of its kind. He had displayed a lot of his gemstones on top of this kind of almost light box and it really made it look so different and stand out as well. So that was really beautiful. Now the next table here was a lot more findings and practical jewelry supply things. So I found some chain that I was looking for. Like I mentioned, I was at this show last time and this same table was there and I asked if they were going to come for this time and they said they were, so I definitely knew I was going to be getting some chain and some findings from them, especially these copper, because one thing I really struggled finding is copper findings, especially chain and clasps. So I knew I was coming here to stock up on them a little bit. And you'll be seeing some of that later on in the haul section of this video. Now, another thing that was loads of as well in different shapes and sizes was Labradorite. And this is another stone that I'm always attracted to. It is one of my favourites. I just always have to kind of see what Labradorescents they each have. Because some of them could be just so beautiful. So that's definitely one of my favourites as well. You can see here some of them have just got such a sheen to them. And they have this different colour. They're all pretty much different. None of them are the same. And there you can see different rainbow colours. Some have got more different colours, some are a bit more neutral, but they're all, in my opinion, equally beautiful. So I always have to just kind of go around and look at them as well. But I didn't buy any Labradorite this time around, so I did restrain myself. So here are some of the raw gemstones that I mentioned earlier, where you just have this big stone on the outside that's been broken open, and you have this beautiful sparkle from the gemstones on the inside of the stone. 
So then this next table here also holds another big weakness of mine. It's probably my favourite gemstone to work with and to use in different kinds of jewellery and pieces. And it's hematite. So basically, more or less any form of hematite is my favourite. Whether it's bare hematite, whether it's coated in different colours. I just really love working with hematite also because it's so useful for many different mediums and materials that you want to use in your pieces. So as you can see, whether it's silver coated, blue coated, purple coated, or rainbow coated, it's something personally I can never really have enough of. So this is probably my all-time favorite gemstone. But this table here with all this hematite and other gemstones, I just thought was really nice laid out. Everything looked so aesthetically pleasing and separated into different colors and kinds of gemstones as well. So this is definitely a table that you kind of were attracted to walk over to. You can see then you have loads of blues laying next to each other, also in different stones. Or you have all the hematite like I've showed you on the end there. Then you go up to the reds and these all really looked very nice. Now at this table here I found something very special last time I came to the show because they were there and I asked them if they were coming back and they said they were so I was definitely looking forward to that. And what that is is again some hematite but something I had never seen before last time and that's a rose gold coated hematite. And I just saw it instantly last time and I just fell for it immediately because it was so beautiful. I love any coated hematite but it just looked so elegant and exclusive that I just had to get some last time. And I'm definitely looking in to try and get hold of more because I just think it's really, really beautiful. So it's those two sizes right there and also the other shape. So last time I got the round ones. So I definitely, I've kind of been saving them for something special, so I haven't used them yet. But I do plan on using them for something at some point in the future. But hopefully also get some more strands. Now something else that I love is things like this. So whether it's cabochon form, whether it's slabs, or just different shapes of the gemstones. I love where you kind of have these markings on them, or it almost looks like different landscapes. And you can just almost see a whole story or a whole picture within one of these pieces. I just really love that as well. So that was my trip to the bead show here. So I do hope you enjoyed coming along with me and having a little look at how it is. So I do recommend if you have a chance to go to this bead show, I highly recommend it. It's in Harrogate and it's also a very beautiful place. So it's on twice a year. So if you do get the chance and if you're close enough, I highly recommend it. So first of all, I just want to show you the little brochure from them. So this is the actual name of the show, the Rock Gem and Bead Show. And then you have all the dates in here. So obviously this is from this year, but then also the beginning of next year. Now I went to the show in Harrogate here in August. And it's also a really beautiful area, so it's a lovely trip and day out. Both for the show, but also the actual area is absolutely beautiful. So it's not really close to me, but it's okay to get to, a bit of a drive. But that was a really nice day, so it's obviously going into next year as well, so I'll definitely be going back to the show next year. So now that I'm back home from the show, I just want to show you a few things that I picked up. And first of all here, I'm going to start with this one. So I didn't pick up lots of things while I was there, just really a few things that kind of caught my eye. And I couldn't really just leave them there and not get them because I just fell for them too much. And these ones, if I remember right, were one of those things. And I actually saw these were pretty much done and more or less on the way out of the show. And then these just caught my eye. And I just had to have a closer look and I just then had to pick them up because they're so beautiful. So it's these just raw rocks, you could say. Really beautiful colouring. And obviously that's really what caught my eye the most was the actual colouring of it. Now the guy that sold them explained that it's actually pyrite and because of where they're from what happens is that this colour comes from the oxidisation of it and it just looks like this all the way around so they're just really beautiful and I just really can't wait to have these on display because it's just what looking at stuff like this just kind of really puts me in a happy mood. Lovely colours and some shininess to it, almost a bit metallic as well. So I did just have to get a couple of these. They weren't too expensive either. So I picked a few of them up. So the next stones that I picked up were these ones here. So I'm just gonna have to use some scissors to get back into them because they're taped up pretty nicely. Obviously secure transport back home. 
so it's always good. And also see if they survive, but I don't see why not. I'll just get into these. Now these are also some stones that I got. Again, they caught my eye, and I just, I'd never really seen anything quite like them. So because I felt like they were so special, I had to kind of get some. Make sure I didn't really miss out. Now there are quite a few to choose between. So it took me a little while to look at them all and pick which ones I wanted to get. Let's see if I can get into it all here. But eventually I did pick two. And you kind of bought them in sets. Again, they didn't cost that much price-wise, which is also why I thought I'd get a couple. But they kind of were laid out like separate stones, but they actually then were sold in sets. So this is one of them. So you can see it actually fits together like this, but they were sold like this, so I didn't realize that they went together until he explained it, and then found the ones that match. So obviously this is kind of the original stone, but then you break into it and you just have this absolutely beautiful cave of colour and sparkles and everything. I love this kind of gemstone stuff. Now, I have seen this kind of druzy thing before in different colours, but what I've never seen is where it's got a beautiful colour on the inside, but then it's kind of, I don't know if it's dyed or what, but dyed black on the outside. Normally it's just left raw or bare, but I thought this was really beautiful. And I'll just get into the other one as well. They did have two different colours. There was the pink one here and also a blue and I did like the blue and I did consider getting the different colours because obviously if I was going to get two that made sense but I just liked the pink so much that I kind of had to just get two of that because the pink on the inside and then with the black on the outside it just made it stand out so much and this is the other one so you can see quite a bit larger and you break into it and you just have this beautiful cave of beautiful sparkiness that sparkleness that you just kind of almost want to live in. I know I do anyway. And then just fit perfectly together. So you can obviously display them right next to each other like that. So I really like the way they look so I had to pick, some, pick up some of them. Now they are a bit messy on the outside here but they're just going to be for display so that'll be fine. And then the final stones that I got from there with these ones here. Now they're kind of cabochon like but not completely. So it's these two, and they're shaped into hearts. So it's Amazonite, which I do really love that stone. But they're not quite cabochons because they're just fully rounded on both sides. You don't have a flat side, but there's no holes. So it's the same principle, really. You could do pretty much all the same things as you could with a cabochon. So I saw them, and they had lots of different sizes, ranging from about this as the largest and then smaller. And then obviously it looks slightly different, all of them. So I think they're really beautiful, and I really like the heart shapes. I don't really have anything like this, so I immediately got some ideas thought to kind of capture them, probably using wire work I thought would look really nice in some interesting way that I maybe could come up with. So I got a couple just to obviously experiment with, but I do really like Amazonite, and I thought they were really cute in these hats as well. And then the final thing that I got while we were there were these findings here. So... I showed you all the stone things that I got. And then here I got a couple of findings because we went to the same show here early in the year. It's the same people that arranged it. So, and back then I kind of asked a lot of the tables and people if they were coming back for this show because I knew the show was coming. And they were, so I knew I was going to pick up some more things that I picked up last time just to stock off again. And there were some copper findings because... I found some that I really liked, and I do find it a little bit hard to find that otherwise in other shops and online. But then first of all, I got these jump rings in copper, obviously rose gold rather, that I use for my copper things. And this is my favourite size of jump ring, the 5mm ones. And I think when I tried these last time, they were really good quality, so I definitely knew I wanted some more of them. And then I got this chain as well, which I also saw last time, so I wanted some more to stock up to make sure I don't run out. And basically, again, it's copper or rose gold, whatever you prefer to call it. But this is with my intention to use basically as extender chain, so I'll be cutting into shorter lengths. You can use it as regular chain as well, but a lot of regular chain you buy can't really be used as extender chain because it's either too fine, the links themselves, or it just doesn't really work, whereas this is specifically really extender chain, you can tell, and will work with the different clasps and that. So I have... I'm pretty sure it's a continuous length of, I got 5 metres, 
and I can just cut off little lengths as I go as and when I need them. So I definitely had to get some more of that to make sure I don't run out of that because those basic kind of findings here, both jump rings and extender chain and other things, you really can never have enough of that and you don't want to risk running out of that. So that's the little finding things that I got as well, along with the few stones. So that was then a recent trip that I had to a local gem and bead show. It wasn't really that local, it was a bit of a drive, but kind of the most local that I could get to. So I went to it early in the year, like I said, so I had I knew I had to go again, and I did really enjoy it both times. So I definitely plan on going again next year, and whenever we can get to it, really. And also the little haul at the end. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video here, and thank you very much for watching.